they want us to enjoy our life, not just America, the whole world, but I will tell you this, he's making America a pattern. Yeah. And he said, I'm starting with America, but this is how, this is, this is how detailed God is with me. He said, before I can even start this, I have to get England out of the Union, out of the European Union. He said, I don't want them a part of the European Union. He said, America was birthed from England. How about that? I birthed it out of England, and you're going to do great things together. Look forward to uh, whoever takes Queen Elizabeth's place. They are going to love America. I think it's probably the, young, the younger ones. I think it's going to be them. Yeah. And, uh, but I do know that America and England will do many great projects together, like America and Israel. England's always been one of our friends and all, one of our allies. And we did help them in the past, and a lot of people we helped in the past, America did military-wise. But I do know that he said the eagle and the lion will do many great things together in this, in this habitation of God. And he said, I cannot allow them to remain in the European Union. So when that vote came up, I knew what was going to happen overseas. I knew they were going to say, we don't want to be in here anymore. We're stepping out of that. They already have, by the way. And they did it before the elections because he said, I have to have them do that first. So let me tell you, he's got his hand on this world. He is positioning this world to run after him and run after anything that looks or sounds like heaven. Yes. Because he's revealing one of the greatest mysteries of all time Amen. and bringing details and evidence that it exists. And in order to do this, there's things he's going to be shifting governments, he's shaping nations so that they will be set up for this time. But as far as blessing and radically change in the government, he is starting with our country. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know what God told me years ago? He said, stop telling me people saying God was going to curse America. California would drop off the end of the, the map, you know. Uh, there's going to be a great earthquake that will split America all the way down the center. And there's like a half a million body bags waiting in Missouri to take care of all the dead. This came from the highest office. Six times they tried to spread that. Mm -hmm. in our country because they wanted anarchy in our country. They wanted people riding in the streets, fear to go all over the people. And this is what God said. He actually laughed every time they tried it. He said the American people are not going to believe that because they actually want to have a life. They have families. They have a future. They're not participating with that kind of violence or that kind of fear. Right. So they are wasting their time. And he said, oh, and by the way, they'll never get their guns. Mm -hmm. Because they have their guns is far too many uh, rednecks. <laughs> he said there are way too many rednecks in the, in the mountains and hiding in the woods that would take up any international army that was called in. <laughs> Jerusalem, 
at one point, at the end, that thousand years, there'll still be people of violence that want to kick him off the throne and, and take over because Satan will have been loosed from that pit. I'm just giving you some really sound doctrine right now. A lot of people think we're just here and everything's going to happen on this earth. It'll just, you know, get bad and better. Then we'll all live here forever. When that's not scriptural. You know, it's not scriptural. We'll be taken off of this earth and everything will be folded away like an old garment. And he will make all things new. We'll have a new heavens. We'll have a new earth where it will be our world. It'll be God's and ours together because heaven is his home. This is our home. One day we'll all have a home together. That's how simply he explains things to me. He said, I'll make the new world. I'll put all of you on it. And then I will pack my bags in heaven. And I will get out of the new Jerusalem. And I will move to the new earth. And we'll all be there forever. And instead of just visiting places on that earth, you can visit places out in the cosmos. Out in the cosmos. You better visit other planets, create fun things to do on those planets. He said, there are blank canvas because I'm going to let you create things on them. <laughs> so it gets better and better for us, you know. We're here, we have a window of time that God allows us to make a difference, to be a part of his plan, to win the loss to him, yeah. to love them and That's share right. the truth. And I have to say both. You know, he won't let me just say just all love and not share truth because real love is truth. That is correct, yes. yes. Love makes you feel welcome and wanted, but truth is what makes you free. Yes, a lot of amen. persons won't talk about that anymore. But let me tell you, if someone's representing God right now on this earth, they will be talking about truth, holiness, love, right, and a future. Because that's what he wants people to hear from him. And if he was standing here himself, he would be telling you the same things. That he wants you to be great in this earth for him. He doesn't want you to just get by. He doesn't want you to barely exist. He absolutely is not the author of poverty, right. sickness, right. disease, hate, fear. Right. He's not the author of any of those things. And so all those belong to the devil. He has very little that belongs to him. Most things he's stolen and twisted. But we're about to take it all back for God, for heaven, in, this, in America, right? And then it'll be demonstrated from that place around the world. And so America had only one thing to become, and that would be great. God said they were still a baby nation. They've only just begun, just begun to step into their destiny and their purpose. Everything up until now has been preparation, that foundation is being laid by the generations behind us. The things that have been done in the countries around the world from America were all foundation. And now... We really get to rule and win with Christ, to push back darkness, to be extremely wealthy, to build things for the kingdom. Money is necessary in this world. They don't want to have it in heaven. Everything is free. You don't need to pay for anything. Everything is, everything is given to you. But while we're here again, as long as there's a monetary system and there's things to be done, we need to have the big money, not the little money. Right. If the devil's had it for years and he's spread evil everywhere, why would God not want his own children back to right. the most healthy right. people in the yes. world? Woo. The more you have, the more you can do. And that's, that's true. It's really true. The more you have, the more you can do. And to me, money is a tool. Money is a tool made by God to be above in this world to shake this world, to help the masses, not just a handful, to let them see the hand of God extended to them to change their lives, and to make sure no one is hungry, okay? God never invented hunger. He didn't invent starvation. He always wanted plenty, even when it looked impossible. Even in the time of famine, great famine that hit this world, God always made sure his people and the people around them were taken care of. If he had to make the food, yeah. if he had to make food right now and put it on your plates, he could do that. Right. If he had to have banks put in your possession with billions of dollars yeah. so you can be wealthy to go around this world, oh. he can do that. Yeah. You cannot limit him. This earth is the speck of dust yeah. out of the cosmos, and yet
sour. And they thought we had to be boring and sour and mean. And yet none of that represents the Father or His Son. So we have to change our mindset, change our heart, change what we think our future is, and let God be unlimited in our lives. Amen. They have not forgotten you. They're making plans for your lives. But right now, they know God has plans for you to stay right here. Okay, he needs you here. He doesn't want you to escape. And if you're appointed to live on this earth for a very long time, you are not going to escape having to happen to you. You need to let grief go about those who bless you. They're not suffering. They are not sick. Amen. They are Amen. not even dead. They're more alive. They have things yes. you only would dream of having. Yes. Okay? They have so much abundance in heaven. Many properties, many mansions, the ability to travel in and out in the spirit realm. They ride on beams of light. They, they travel on music. Okay? They sing with all the beasts of the field and all the fish of the sea. Everything worships God in heaven. It is a glorious, powerful place. And that place is invading this earth. If you can live on earth like you live in heaven, then you need to see yourself living like that. We haven't even begun to see inventions come into this earth that God has purposed to be here. Because you look at life the way it is, it isn't going to stay the same. We're in a new time. Things will be done differently. And that's why this is the greatest time to be alive. And your children will be some of the greatest leaders in the body of Christ this world has ever seen. They will be fearless. They will be powerful. They'll, be, they'll speak words from the living God that will shape people. Some of them will even be pastors of churches at age yeah. 10 and 11 because God has purpose that. We have to think this is new. We're in the new. We're not waiting on the new. You're in a new time right now on this earth. And so you can't think, well, everything's going to go back to normal. Now that Trump's been elected, it will never be normal. God told me when Trump sits in the White House from the day he sits there, you will never have a boring day in America. So it's not going to be the way it was before. A lot of people, we want to go back. No, you don't want to go back the way it was before. You want greater than it ever has been before. There's a lot of things that will change as time goes by. On this plan that I've been taking, close to 150 years is the future in America and in other parts of the earth. And it won't look like it does now. But there will be no perilous times even then. And I know in our mind, uh, we all have our own eschatology. That's a big word for me. The Holy Spirit just told it to me. Whatever that means. <laughs> I'll have to go look it up. <laughs> Maybe say a big word. Wow. <laughs> Mostly what I say, eight-year-olds can understand. Because we're just children. Mm. He doesn't want to confuse us. You know, he doesn't want to, he wants us to clearly understand what he's saying himself, what his word says, why his son came, what his son meant when he said things. And so this is a time of extreme revelation and extreme mysteries in the word being revealed. We get to be some of the first, even in the last, these are last days, but it will last for generations. But it's certainly closer to the end than it was a thousand years yes, ago. Yes. And yet God knew all of this. He knew our lives. He knew things we would choose. He had a divine purpose for everybody, a plan for everybody. Not everybody chose that plan. He's not going to hold that against you, okay? If you're still here, if you didn't give up, if you didn't run away, you are still blessing his heart. He knows that we are human, even though we're supernatural people in this human body. He still knows 
that you are for him and not against him. He knows that you really truly want his will. And the more he reveals how you are made and how to operate, you will be more like him. Right. And so yeah. you will look more like God and sound like more God, like God, than any of the generations that went before yes. us. Everyone has powers. Everybody who took Christ, received Christ, and gave you powers. Like a superhero has powers. Because there's a spirit realm around us that is uh, where a lot of injustice comes from, where the enemy's been ruling because we were we didn't have knowledge of it. Like people perish for lack of knowledge. Right. So he is now giving you knowledge of that place, yeah. showing you what your authority is, what your weapons are, how to use them. It's going to be really bad days for hell for generations to come. <laughs> Because we're going to know our God, we're going to know who we are. Even just like when I was explaining and describing the soul last night, I mean, I don't know anyone has actually seen a human soul. There probably are somebody somewhere in the past saw it. But this is the time where he wants to talk about and describe mm -hmm. and then explain to you what you really are. You yeah. are a living soul. Yeah. Yeah. Your mind has the mind of Christ because you gave yourself to him. You got deposits from the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the inside of your being. The inside of your being is lit up. You've got powerful light on the inside of you. The enemy hates that light. He wants to put that light out or crush that light. And if you keep if you keep you in fear yeah. or offense or wounded, then he is being successful. You can walk free of all those things. You don't have to keep any of them. And I'm always going to point you back to Christ. Everything goes back to Him. If we are if we have if we are joint heirs, mm -hmm. and I worked in law for eight years, I know what that means. You had everything that person put you in their will. It was like you were them. You owned it like they owned it. It was going to be given to you like they had a possession of it. I know what those words mean. Knowing legal terms has helped me to speak for God. Because there's things you can't abolish that has been set by law or in writing and approved by the person who owned that stuff. Nobody can take it away from you. So Christ, his last will and testament, which is the New Testament that was written for us. The New Covenant has your names on it in heaven if you received him. Whatever Christ walked in, operated in, had power and authority over, owned, and had is all ours. Yeah. We have his name, we have his word, we have his blood. But literally what he had is ours. He was extremely wealthy. He was not ever poor. You don't have a treasure to hold your pennies. That's right. He was never poor on the earth. He became poor when he left heaven. Yes. He became poor that we might be rich. He became poor when he left heaven. Yes, that's but On the earth as a human, he was never poor. No. Caravans brought him wealth. Not one camel. Right. Not Preach three it. camels. Preach Go back it. and read about that when those, those kings and those wise men traveled for two years. Yes. He wasn't a baby in the manger when they found him, by the way. It's just the way they've always shown it. We're going to show it the right way one day, okay? <laughs> two years they traveled. They had caravans. They had their servants, their tents, they had food, they had food for their animals. They were as huge caravans, and these were extremely wealthy people that were focused by God to bring treasures to his son that literally would support him for the rest of his life on earth. Right. He exactly. started out wealthy. He didn't never start out poor. He was only poor by heaven's standards, okay? We've been living well, way below heaven's standards. So if you've been saying yourself, on earth as it is in heaven, you better get used to having wealth. Yes. Because his son never was poor. He wasn't poor. He started out wealthy. They went to Egypt. They didn't run and hide in a hovel. <laughs> he had some of the greatest, greatest tutors and wisest men teach him about the Torah, teach him his ABCs, and I'm sure he shocked him, stunned him in one of them with the wisdom that he carried, because by the time, even as a young boy, he knew who his real father was. Right. He had conversations with him, uh, he would spend time as the presence of his father would visit him, 
and he would always instruct him and tell him things, so he would shock and stun. That's why he didn't leave the temple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember, his parents had to go back for him. You're right. You know, what are you doing? It must be about my father's business. Yeah. Because he knew what his business was, what it was going to do, how it would change humanity. Right. And he was stunning and shock- shocking those scholars, those religious hierarchy in the temple just couldn't get over him. Or why didn't they send him back to the caravan? Because he was missing for several days, not just for a few hours. They didn't want to let him go. Because he was bombarding their human mind with revelation of heaven, and they just couldn't get over it. They were amazed and undone, saying, who is this person? Who is this child? And then here comes Mary and Joseph saying, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you come back? Well, because I'm, I'm doing my father's business, actually. This is what he's saying. I'm, I'm doing my father's business. This is why I was sent here. And so he knew who he was at a young age. And, and he didn't slack up at all, let me tell you. I'm sure the friends he had were shocked and amazed at him. He had some of the wealthiest people in the city after he had grown up as his friends. He was welcome in their homes. They gave him gifts. He gave gifts. And that, that garment that was uh, gambled for at the cross was his own garment. It wasn't something a wealthy person gave him. It was seamless. It was unheard of for people to have such wealth and such great things to wear. And it was so important that those guards gambled for what he was wearing because it was very valuable and worth, worth a lot of money. So he didn't want this earth poor. Okay? According to heaven, That's right. <laughs> when you own the entire cosmos and everything in it, and you made it yourself, and you speak and create even the stuff that is well yourself. Okay, when you leave that and come here, you're poor. <laughs> no matter how much they gave you here, it was nothing compared to what he had up there. Right. And he doesn't want us to be poor on earth. He wasn't poor. A good word. And yet we were taught that poverty was holiness. <laughs> I don't know anyone more holy than Jesus Christ, and he was never poor. He was not poor. I know I heard that growing up. And I, was, I was raised in church my entire life. I got born again at age four. I knew what I was doing. I was excited. I felt Christ move inside of me, and I came home so excited. My mom was there with a new baby. She kept having babies, you know. I'm only 15, so my life was, I, you know. Only God had me have three daughters, I can tell you that. Because I was one of the older ones, had a lot of responsibility. And so I came home to tell my mama, I received Jesus Christ today. And he lives in me. I am so excited. (laughs) I had to announce it. And really, from that time, I could see in the spirit. I began to see the spirit immediately. I could see angels. I could see the demonic. I saw all kinds of stuff going on. So I, I'm 64. I said I was 65 last night. I forgot how old I was. <laughs> Who cares? That's right. That's Heaven right. Is <laughs> Heaven is ageless. Woohoo! Yeah. You need to start connecting with that part of heaven. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And so I have known the Lord for 60 years. And yet I still made mistakes growing up. You know, don't be concerned. We all made mistakes, right? Uh, even my, my dad, I'm sure when he was young, somewhere maybe he wasn't fine. <laughs> but as long as I knew my dad, he was so in love with Jesus Christ. He knew the Father intimately. He knew the Holy Spirit intimately. All three of them, he talked about all three of them. It was never just like God. It was always Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, or the Father. And and so I'm going to take just a few minutes, and I didn't get to explain last night very much, but I really want to leave you with a very good visual of what they look like. Is that okay? Yes. Um, I, I had seen Jesus many, many, many times on the earth while I was growing up, when I was very young. He would come and talk to me, and I actually got where I could identify even by a voice who was talking to me. I knew if it was the Father, if it was Jesus, I knew if it was the Holy Spirit. He became my best friend very early on. And when I think I was 17, around 17, 17 and a half, I actually said, well, I'm, you just know, I already know you so well, I want you to live inside of me. And so I asked him to come inside of me, boy, did he ever move in. 
And from that moment, I've heard his voice 24 hours a day. I really honestly do, it's possible. I really just gave myself to what God wanted in the midst of being raised in a tribe with all of the, the drama around me, the demands on me. Um, I was on my parents' side at an early age because we had a lot of hard-headed uh, people in my family, seven brothers and seven sisters I had. We had one bathroom. We had a huge kitchen. We, you had laundry duty, dish duty, I mean, but you had your help. And back in that day, we had to hang the clothes on the clothesline, and the dogs loved to run around and pull them off the clothesline. <laughs> and then we'd have to wash them, put them through the ringer washer. Right. As my brothers threw bugs on the clothes when they passed through the ringers, which meant I was going to wash them all. I, I wanted to leave theirs with the bugs on them, you know. I feel like they deserved it. Let's just, just let's hang them up in the line. They can have the box on their own clothes. Uh, but I was too kind. I didn't do that. So we had an alligator, really true, that lived in our bathtub in Florida. Uh, he was only three foot long. He wasn't eight foot. His name was Charlie. I've seen him in heaven. You can't tell me your pets don't go to heaven. It's too late to tell me that. It's just too late. It's just a, it's, it's a legalistic thing, a religious thing to say that because the animals really, they're innocent. I mean, they didn't sin except the snake, and he paid a price for that. Got to his legs away, I would do like that. Well, while I'm showing off the legs, you should stand up and walk. But he lost his legs the day he did that. Mm. He gave permission for Satan to possess him, to use his voice, because they all spoke, all the animals spoke in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. When Adam called them by name, he was talking to them, and they answered him. Yeah. Okay, that was before sin came in. And then God said, I removed away their ability to speak so they wouldn't learn from their, the people who have them how to curse me. But so they don't, they can't. And so they're innocent. If you love them, he takes them there. So how does it qualify? Well, you love them, he takes them. If they're not good, I don't know what happens to them. <laughs> <laughs> I met a lady that rescued animals. She goes, she wouldn't even believe her. Well, I've always believed animals went to heaven. I'm not so sure people qualify. She, 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 she was a sinner. She was just being honest. They hate each other. They mean each other. And these innocent animals are so abused by them. I believe they all go to heaven except that goat and that pen is going straight to hell. <laughs> I rescued that goat and it butts me all the time. It was in its own pen. It bites people. It bites people. That goat is headed for hell. I said, well, I, I can't qualify the goat going to hell. Uh, maybe because people abused it, it acts that way. Well, maybe they'll give me a second chance. But she was convinced that one wasn't going to heaven. <laughs> she told me about her horse that had just died. She got a, a, a backhoe and buried it out in the back part of her property. The horse was her best friend. And I began to tell her how God loved the horse because she loved the horse. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to go to heaven, you have to know the living God. That's how you get there. You know, you have to have, to have Him to go there. She said, "Well, I promise you, I will really seriously consider it because if He loves my my animals enough that He's made a place of safety and haven for them, then maybe I do want to know it because most Christians I know are lousy and mean uh, and spiteful. That, wow, that shows you right there why we are not going anywhere. Yeah." That's because right. the world must know us by our, our love, love for each other. And I have met many people that don't think that about us. Amen? Yeah. I'm not saying you aren't, but I'm saying the majority of believers that this one woman met in our city were not nice. Wow. And she said I was one of the nicest Christians she'd ever met. And uh, she even liked my pink hair. <laughs> the sinner had no problem with the pink hair. Right, that's right. Yeah, I, I start telling them this is heaven culture. You, you actually get to have violets in your hair in heaven, and you travel on light, and you ride on worship. And uh, I talk to her about the Father and how his hair is this beautiful white, alive. His hair is like alive. I've touched his hair. I tell people about it. You see the face of God. I have touched him. And when I would touch his hair, life would go into my spiritual body. Because I, I was caught up by my spiritual body. My physical body stayed here. I had no, no connection to it. I didn't know what it was doing. didn't care, actually. I uh, wasn't given a choice. My husband would say, I walk in the room and you were just staring. 
and say, I'll come back later. <laughs> now, when he said, let me clarify that. Yes. When he said, I'll come back later, it wasn't to ask me what I saw in heaven. It was to find out what he was going to have for dinner. <laughs> That's why he was coming back. Yes. <laughs> wasn't he about my wonderful things I saw? He was hungry. And his socks needed washing. So he came back later and asked me those very things. <laughs> the first time I was caught up, if you don't know anything about me, it was to a fun place in heaven. I, I have been prepared and processed by God for almost my entire life to stand here and talk to you about these things. I am a detailed person. Every businessman that hired me really liked me. I have a photographic memory, and I have great favor. I actually have a gift of favor from God, especially working in the legal area. Um, none of the, the judges or the county clerks liked attorneys. They would rather spit on you and talk to you because they knew when you call, you were gonna change the yes. docket. Yes. Yes. For the whole court that day, you would mess it up by saying, I, I, I can't come, I won't be coming. This has come up, this has come up, I need to change this because my client can't come or my client, we don't have all the evidence, whatever it was, they had to call, they made me call them. I had 80 attorneys, I only worked for one, but they all had me call the county clerks because they go, oh, of course, we are so thrilled you're calling, we would love to change that for you. <laughs> they knew I must have been from God because that didn't happen to their secretaries or anybody else in the, in the in the, in the office, so they would always have me talk to them, and they always changed the dates for me. And so I always walked in favor, no matter where I worked, I had great favor, that was from God. And um, and so they don't like, they didn't like doing things for anybody, and so I, I was very well liked in the office because of that. And yet, but God can give you favor, and I shared God there, I wasn't going to heaven yet, but I was processed in my whole life, the entire, all the stuff I went there with you a lot, Last night I just explained one thing I'd gone through. But I had to learn to absolutely love people with the love of God, not, not with human love. Uh, the things, even before I started doing this, the things that were said to me, or I was accused of by people, none of them were true. I had to learn, I actually learned and said, please forgive me that you were upset about me. I wasn't admitting that I was guilty. God made me go to these people that were trashing me. Yep. Would you like that? Uh, say, I need to let you know that that I'm not angry that things were said about me, but I'm so sorry that whatever it was upset you. Yeah. And I want you to know I yeah. care about you. I, I want to be your friend. I, yeah. I don't want to be enemies. You yeah. know, God didn't put me here to, to get people upset or make them angry. Yeah. And they would just say, okay, I'll forgive you. Yeah. They never said, will you forgive me? Yeah. But he didn't say to act that way if they sat when you forgive right. me. He said, you go and tell them, exactly. please forgive me. Exactly. And I had to do that over and over and over again until nothing touched me that people said. It really was like, it wouldn't it penetrate me, like just go over me and I get honest with the people and say, I know even while they're trashing me, we know I'm sorry you misunderstand, but I want you to know I love you. I they couldn't bear of the devil that was in them, could not bear me saying those words to them. I love you, God loves you. Did you know he I mean they're trashing and swearing at me. He has great plans for you. He made you to be a light in this world. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? It's like I was crushing the air of the enemies, right? Like I had his esophagus, I was crushing it. Yeah. Because he was putting those words, I could see them. I am a seer. I saw the demons sitting here saying the words and then they were saying them to me. And I stopped it every time because I wouldn't give it back. The enemy wants you to give that stuff back. Wow. And I would begin to see the demon would begin to scream and, and hold his ears because he didn't want to hear the life of God going into these people's souls. <laughs> Their souls were so beat up on the inside, some were shredded, some had so much darkness in them. And every time I spoke, I saw a beam of light like a spear go in and it would split the darkness. And so as much as I could, I would say to them before they would run away or leave, um, I would give as much life as I could into them knowing I'm actually piercing the enemy the whole time I do this to set those people free. It says the anointing breaks the yoke. Yeah. And I was releasing the anointing.
pointing at all these people, I could see this yoke over them being broken, like cracks were coming into it. Sometimes it would fall like dust off of them. You need to know, this is why God needs seers in the earth. I knew what I was doing to them. I clearly could hear what they were saying to me, but I knew the enemy was using them. It didn't mean it was right what they were saying, but I, I more wanted them free than I wanted them to, you know, repent to me. I wanted them free more than I wanted what in the natural, uh, you know, would be owed to me. And it's hard, I know it's hard sometimes, but let me tell you, you are doing the greatest justice, releasing justice in the earth for those people. You already belong to God. All of eternity has been given to you. You are going to have the greatest lives of human beings who ever lived on the earth. Right. Because you gave yourself to Christ. I've seen eternity. I've seen it. It's way beyond anything your human mind can fathom or even contain. Some things I won't even share with you because it's so powerful and so great that, you know, some people are struggling just to hear that I can see the face of God. When everybody would, a lot of people say, I, I liked you too, you said that, now I know you're lying. Because the word says you can't see the face of God and live. I went, every selfish thing in you dies when you stand before him. Every opinion, every attitude. And I went, yeah, that's dying. Not physically dying. That means inside you die to yourself. Right, that's good. The more you have his presence, it even happens now, the more you're with him, yes. the more of his presence you have, yes. your attitudes, your rights, your opinions, mm -hmm. your selfish just begins to die. Yes. It talks about your flesh dying. You haven't even known about that. Yes. Your flesh is your attitude. Yes. It's something yes. that's inside you. Yep. I tell people the more I saw him, the more I died to myself until I wasn't me anymore. Right. Did you know the devil can't use dead people? Mm -hmm. That's right. So if you lay down your life, that means you die to yourself and you live in him. And when you talk, you sound like him. When people see you, you, you look like him. You know, you're happy. You have joy. You, you speak kindly to people. That's Christ. That's what he did on the earth. And yet at the same time, I have absolute power and authority over anything of the enemy. Every knee of every demon has to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Right, right. They will flee from you when they begin to sound like him and you operate like him in the earth. And they That's cannot right. stand you. It's painful to be around you right. when you live like that, which is why he wants us to live like that. And yet we sit every week in our pews, in our churches, and we hear the same messages. And those are good messages if you don't know God. But if you know him, you need more. You need the more of God. You need to know him. You need to know how powerful he made you. You need to know he has plans for you. He'll open up all kinds of things for him if you ask him. Start asking him for more than just enough to get by on. Okay, he doesn't want to just give you your rent money. He wants you to be a pay off everybody's house on the street that lives on the street. That's what he wants you to do. That's the manifested work of God in the earth. He wants you to own car lots to give the cars away because you don't need the money. You don't need to make the money when you sell them. This is the way he thinks. This is how he thinks. And it might sound boring to you, but Christ on this earth gave, 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 gave. I'm sure he gave almost all the furniture away that he made. Probably very expensive things. He blessed people. People probably didn't have anything. He probably built a house for them. Uh, it says if everything that Christ did was written down, the books would go around the world. How much did he do? How much did he do? And guess what? You get to find all that out when you go to heaven. Yeah. He was nonstop. I mean, he hardly ever slept. He hardly ever ate. At one point, he was giving up so much glory and anointing. He did, you know, his clothing was filled with life. That's why when that woman touched it, life went in her and she was healed. And But he wants us to do that. Yes, yeah. He wants us to be like that. If the disciples did it, then why can't we do it? That's right. Right? right. The anointing wasn't for the past. Everyone who gets born again, according to 1 John 2, 27, it lives in you. You don't just get it, it actually lives in you so you can use it. Right? So we are these great supernatural superhero people sitting here wondering, does God care about me? Does he know who I am? And he's made all these plans, made all this possible for you, but you aren't hearing it. Well, you're hearing it now. 
You know, and I'm not ever going to stop doing this. I know one day I'll have huge encounter centers everywhere in the world where people can come and have encounters with God, hear about God. My desire is to bring money and give it away when they go places. How about that one? We come up here to speak and give money from God to everybody in the sanctuary. That is my greatest desire to do that. I'm going to manifest for God in the wealth, and no one's going to stop me from doing that. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. I need to teach you. <laughs> Y'all can't be all worked up. Everybody stand up and let's declare some things to God. Yeah, he is a he is a good God. Yes. Yes. And guess what you can do? You start telling me this a year ago. Start asking me yes. to show my goodness to people. Wow. Yes. Good. Uh, ask him. You know, I started with, he said, start with your family. <laughs> and then ask me to show my goodness to your staff. And so today, I'm going to hold your hands up because I'm going to ask him. Hallelujah. My father, who carried me in his womb until the day he ordained to send me here to be a light to the nations, to be your voice, to bring hope and power and life to your people, to your children, God. I know you love each and every one of them, so I'm asking you, as your daughter, you said if I ask you something, you would not let my words drop to the ground. So I'm asking you, starting this day, God, to show your goodness to every single person who is here, every person who attended these meetings, God, every person who ever listens to these meetings, no matter how far away that is, no matter what their age, what their situation, God, what even what their beliefs are. I'm asking as your daughter to show your goodness to your people, to your children, until they are undone and they are stunned at what you are giving them and doing on their behalf, Father, to bless their lives, to bless their families, to bless their children and the generations coming after them, God. Let your goodness rest on them. Go before them. Go with them, God. Let the Lord to give your goodness to others, Father. So I ask you this in your son's name. With all of my heart, I ask you to give your goodness.